Hello and welcome to Patriot Pants. My name is Lake Green and today we are at historic Allaire State Park in Howell or Wall Township, New Jersey. Let's check out this important village. We are standing right in front of the restored row houses. These brick structures were built in the year around 1830 by Mr. James P. Allaire, the founder of the Howell Works or Allaire Village where we are today in between Howell and Wall Townships in Monmouth County, New Jersey. These houses would hold the families of men employed here at Mr. Allaire's Iron Foundry Central New Jersey. Mr. Allaire was born in 1785 in New Rochelle, New York. His father was a livery stabler and owned land in Manhattan and also in upstate New York. And uh, at a young age, Mr. Allaire was caught up in the early days of the American Industrial Revolution. And in the early 1800s, between the year of 1800 and 1806, he worked for a man by the last name of Ellsworth in New York City, who was a prominent brass founder. Uh, and he learned the trade of uh, brass craft and uh, brass founding. And after learning the skills of how to run a brass foundry, he ended up branching off uh, and receiving orders to make brass parts for none other than the great Robert Fulton, the man credited with making the first workable steam engine. And Mr. Allaire himself eventually moving into his own interests uh, into his own foundry and his own engineering capabilities as he was highly talented he learned actually how to make the first compound steam engine for marine use as well as building the first tenement structure in New York City so Mr. Allaire needing a place to get raw materials for the constant supply and construction of his steamboats and his steam engines and other appliances purchased up hundreds and hundreds of acres here in Howell, New Jersey, and founded Allaire Village. Why here? Because in these sandy plains and uh, slow-moving streams, iron was naturally prevalent. Uh, the water tainted red, not as red as the cedar water in the Pine Barrens, but still the same principle, not just because of the uh, tannins from the trees, but from the oxidization and the natural iron that was built in these bogs. So from 1822 through the mid 1840s, he ran a highly successful uh, village here at Howell in which he, at a large iron forge, smelted iron into molds, into pig iron uh, and bars, and also had a couple factories, a grist mill, a sawmill, a blacksmith shop. It was a completely self-sufficient village. And also he had a screw factory in which he would make uh, smaller appliances like kettles and nails. And eventually what happened was, is uh, in the 1840s and late 1830s, there was a lot of uh, economic unrest in the country through the Panic of 1837 and others. Uh, and what happened was, is a lot of his um, boats and barges that he used for transport of his goods from this factory, not only did he use the barges and the canals, but also the railroad, which is the rail line that still stands here that is not used to ship his goods, but mostly by boat up along the Atlantic coast, as we're only 15 minutes from the Atlantic Ocean, uh, were not insured. And he actually ended up losing a lot of money during the economic uh, downturn, and then had to file for bankruptcy uh, when in the mid-1840s, one of his largest ships filled with iron products sunk off the uh, Atlantic coast and uh, was uninsured. So, irregardless of that fact, for about 25 years, this village was an important producer for iron uh, products, uh, for Mr. Allaire's steamboat engines, and for uh, you know iron uh, 
you know, products around the country, whether it's for homes, for streets, for pipes, uh, anything that required the metal. Howell, New Jersey, and most of southern New Jersey during this early point in American history was a very crucial supplier of the nation's early steel demands. Alaire Village, an excellent, excellent example of early American life in the 1820s, 30s, and 40s. Standing right behind me is all that remains of the original furnace structure here at Allaire Village. This furnace, built by James P. Allaire in the early 1820s, uh, was built to ensure a continuously and sustainably produced supply of iron for his engineering and steam engine and other uh, production uh, desires. And what happened was is that this furnace would run. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it was a tedious job. Men would, 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 we would wheel out barrels to the top and cut out there, where they would pour in seashells, sand, and other, and clay, and saltpeter, and other things they needed to make the iron, as well as the slag or the bog iron ore itself that was mined from the streams on the property in the proximity, and of course, charcoal would be piled in as well using the wood around uh, for a natural source of that item and right behind me is where it stands the old depot or all that remains of where the charcoal was kept and for 22 plus years really about 23 years this furnace burned from dusk till dawn Alaire village an important part of early American industrial history. Thanks for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe. And I'm Lake Green with Patriot Pets. We'll see you next time.